discouraged Why should the shadows come Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful day today, Trinity Sunday, is the day we celebrate and beginning the whole season. It used to be the, the, the uh, touchstone uh, day of the long season. Sundays were measured as Sundays after Trinity. But some years ago when we redid the prayer book, we also changed around some of the uh, uh, days and seasons so now our long season is our measured in Sundays after Pentecost. But the first Sunday after Pentecost is always Trinity Sunday. And uh, it's a Sunday of, of real importance and uh, less famous now, but not less important. It is not that it's any easy kind of piece of business either. I think understanding the Trinity is not as hard as we sometimes like to make it, but it's certainly not uh, as easy as, uh, you know, just falling off a log. Um, I think it's because the early church enjoyed it. I'm not saying they made it hard on purpose, but they enjoyed the complexity and the putting together both the Hebrew uh, experience of God and the Greek understandings uh, of the persons and substance. And so that combination, uh, biblically based, comes into tradition uh, and uh, is, is powerful for our belief and our faith system. Not always easy to understand. Uh, it can be made hard. I know sometimes in confirmation classes, we used to think, oh gosh, this Trinity is like walking in cement. But uh, it's not that bad. But the, basically, the scripture is quite clear about it, and it's quite simple too. It is that, that God is the creator and acts in a creative way, particularly through the Old Testament. We see that story and then as the Redeemer, acting in Jesus and the ministry and miracles and teachings of Jesus, and then the sanctifier and sustainer in the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, with the church. And Jesus said to his disciples, I'm going to leave you uh, for someone to help you, an advocate, a comforter. Uh, and uh, that's clearly what they meant. But uh, we'll take a look at that today. We'll have the collect for Trinity and then we'll have the scripture from Matthew uh, and then some 
some thoughts uh, about the Trinity, uh, which are uh, fun and better done in this context than that of a, of a stand-up in the pulpit homily. That's always just too, that invites uh, Confucian, actually. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll pray the collect for Trinity. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in trinity of persons. Give us grace to continue steadfast in the confession of this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples made their way to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to meet him. When they saw him, they fell prostrate before him, though some were doubtful. Jesus then came up and spoke to them, and he said, Full authority in heaven and on earth has been committed to me. Go therefore and make all nations my disciples. Baptize men everywhere in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And be assured I am with you always to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. A wonderful gospel um, appointed for Trinity in the uh, season A. But it focuses, as does everything about the Trinity, really on mission. Um, the Trinity, the gospel, the doctrine of the Trinity is complicated theological language, but it really has to do with the mission of the church, the outgoingness of it. The early language uh, of the Trinity talked about persons and substance. Uh, one substance, three persons, and uh, always a cup. I used to like the very simplistic uh, example of uh, water, steam, and ice. One substance, H2O, but three different expressions of that, water, steam, and ice. Now that helps you understand part of me, of the Trinity. But then there's the functional part, what's going on. God, the creator, constantly creating, uh, always creating everywhere, and everything. And then the Redeemer, always redeeming, constantly making new, and bringing brokenness into wholeness. And then, of course, God, the Holy Spirit, who sustains and supports and gives life to everything and everyone. The, the sustaining power of the Spirit has been a, uh, something that we've all experienced and do regularly, and have written a lot about, though. It, um, it's explained in the book of Acts when the disciples were gathered together and the, the wind, the rushing wind came upon them and they, they received uh, the Holy Spirit into their midst. Now, the, uh, the, the sense of the Spirit being with the church always is, is um, more one of experience. And I think we do better with less doctrine and more experience and enjoyment of the spirit of relying on the spirit, uh, in fact, enjoying the spirit. One of the things that's fun about uh, delving into all the different language and concepts of the Holy Trinity as a doctrine is we immerse ourselves in the presence of God. We just get surrounded uh, by images and thoughts and uh, uh, ideas uh, that come from God and that, that are God's presence. And that's great. It's a great experience, although it can be tiring and somewhat frustrating. But I think that, um, uh, in not so much a doctrine way, but an experience way, the Trinity is very helpful to us. The concept of God as three persons doing three things um, as revealed in Scripture and as experienced. And that's the important thing that makes it uh, easier to grasp, I think, and, and better to, to uh, apprehend. Uh, it is uh, really basically the 
Trinity is God's self revealing. God's revealing of God's self in three different ways that are consistent with scripture and our own experience. First of all, as the creator, the creator of all things that we see that creative force at work through Genesis and the book of Genesis and throughout uh, the Old Testament as his creating fatherly power uh, is known. And then as redeemer, God as the redeemer in Jesus, who is making all things new, reconciling uh, people who are at odds, things who are at odds, reconciling us who have fallen away to God who loves us. And then we experience God as the Holy Spirit, comes like a mighty wind, comes quietly, comes constantly and steadily uh, into our lives, holding up, sustaining, literally, uh, supporting all of our life. And those, those are three ways in which scripture describes God's self-revolution, revelation. And those are three ways in which we historically see God's revealing God's self. Largely, it has to do with God's movement outward, God's movement towards us uh, in three ways. The movement, I think we would translate into mission. It is God's mission. Uh, and that's what the, the, the gospel concludes with today. Sending the disciples into the world uh, to proclaim God as the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And so the concept of God as a trinity is important. And the understanding of God as the threefold self-expressed creator, redeemer, and sustainer is how we would try to define the trinity. But how we, how we live it out is in mission, in ourselves carrying out God into the world, movement, a movement of God into the world whom we, which he created, which he loves, and which he redeems. To reveal and proclaim God in as many ways as we can, but always understanding his triune nature and the threefold power and strength of God with us. So have a blessed Trinity. And I hope that your thinking about this is fun and not foggy and, and cloudy or like walking in cement. I hope it's joyful and drinks draws you closer uh, to God and to one another. A blessed Trinity to you.